In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the form for our widget. So let's decide, what do we want this widget to display? This is going to be as simple a widget as we can create. So all I want it to display is a description, some kind of note. You can think of it as the most minimal form of Twitter. It'll just display some kind of message. So all I need there then is a description. First, our form method will receive, and this is most commonly called instance, but you can name this anything you want. And that's going to be whatever the user types into those inputs. When the page posts back, we need to have access to that. Next, I'm going to extract this instance array. And if you remember from the previous chapter, that'll take all of the keys and values within an array and make them available via simple properties. Next, let's begin building our form. So I'm gonna close out PHP so I can use regular HTML. We begin by creating our label. And this label is going to be for an input that we haven't created yet. So I will leave that blank for now. And I'm gonna give it the name title. Next, let's create the input itself. Now, this input is going to have a handful of parameters. So let's begin by giving it a class. Now, this is a class called WideFat. And this value is available to us because it's built into WordPress. And it'll essentially make the input prettier and make sure it takes up all available space. Next, we're going to give it an ID. And we're going to add a bit of PHP logic here. And I'm going to echo out this, which refers to the messenger class itself. And we're going to use a method name called getFieldName. Now, this method we're not creating, it's available to us via the WP widget class that we extended. And we're going to pass in the name title because that's the name of the input we're creating. Now, what this will do is it'll create a unique ID so that we're not overriding any other widgets. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with the name property, get field name. Now, it looks like I did make one quick mistake and we wanna make sure this is get field ID and the name property is get field name. So there is a distinction there. title, then echo, and I'm going to call the escape attributes method to make sure that we escape anything that needs to be, like so. And there's our input. So now we have a label. We need to make sure the label refers to the ID of an input. So with that in mind, I can copy all of this because I know it's going to be the same, like so. So now I will save that. I'm gonna come back, refresh the page, and we have one error on line 49. And it's because, remember, we closed PHP. You have to be sure that you open it up again. Otherwise, you'll get errors like that. And that's another nice thing about an IDE is it'll make sure that it displays the code highlighting appropriately. Refresh. And now if I open up my messenger, can you see that we do have our form? And because we applied this class that you see right here, we get a nicer styling. Let me refresh. And there it is by default. So always add that class to make it more consistent with the other methods. So let's test this out, my title. Save it, and notice how when I saved it, the page posted back and it retained what we typed in here. So just to make sure we all understand, I'm going to print our instance, and note that when I drag this now, we have an array and it has the title. So the instance will be equal to all of the parameters that you add here along with their values. So when we extract that, it takes this array and turns each key into its own variable name. And that's why we can reference it like title. So while we're here, why don't we add one more? I'll create a new paragraph block. To save a bit of time, I will copy all of that, paste it in, and I'm going to change the ID and we'll make this one description like so. Next, let's create our input. Once again, the class will be wide fat. The ID is going to be echo this get field ID. And this will be description again. And the name is going to be the same thing except get field name. And you know what? If we're adding a description, it makes sense rather than using a simple text box. Why don't we go ahead with a text area instead? That way they'll have a little bit more room. There we are. And now for the value of it, we're going to do the same approach that we did here. And I'll say if is set description, then echo escape attributes. And we'll clean this up. And I think that should be all set. So once again, just to cement this in, I'm going to print our instance again. Refresh. And now notice that we're still only showing title. And that's because there is no instance value for description. My description goes here. I'm going to save that. And now note that it does show up right here. 
Now notice here how our description has all of this extra white space, and that's going to be because we added it right here. If we want, we can put all of this on its own line, and that should fix it. One more time, save it, and now can you see that's been fixed? Okay, so let's come back, get rid of print R, and now let's see this on the page. If I view it, of course we're not going to see anything, because remember, all we've done at the moment is we've created our form. We haven't yet written the functionality for the widget. And lastly, let's add some rows, and we'll say 10. There we go, so now we have a section for our title, and our description. So in the next lesson, we're going to create the display of the widget itself so that the viewers can see it on the page.